best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. And uh, oh, Eric Larson watched one of my videos. Uh, well, he did a nice commentary up on Facebook and then a handful of people. Well, sorry, three people. Uh, Andrew Farago, who is a world-class prick, and I'll just leave it out there like that. Yes, I definitely have him blocked on uh, Twitter. Uh, decided to say, hey, you know, that that Perch guy is CG. Do you know that, that he's CG? And so then Larson uh, removed the link, which is fine. Again, this, this is not a for-profit channel. Uh, but uh, Farago uh, managed to uh, say, Perch is a moron. Don't give me any clicks. Those photos of Barnes & Noble, again, it was a video that I did with video of Barnes & Noble, completely ignore the young reader section of the bookstore. It didn't. It actually showed that in the video. That's completely dominated by graphic novels for teens and kids. Eh, it was six, six shelves. I mean, still, still relatively small, which gets a much more nuanced snapshot of American comic publishing right now. Not really. Not, not, not really at all. And again, it flies in the face of what we're seeing with ICB2 and other sites where these numbers are actually hard, but it destroys the narrative. Anyway, uh, Fargo and uh, Dave Cummings uh, went back and forth about how uh, I'm a big shill for the comics gate crowd. So apparently, and then, then later kind of went on to describe, well, he's, he's technically not uh, talking. He's not comics gate, but he talks about the same kind of things that the CG crowd likes to go on about. And because he talks about the same things, he must be terrible. So anyway, always, always fun. Uh, I would just counter with, uh, hey, Farago, uh, you uh, at various times have uh, shilled and promoted people that turned out to uh, have. So, uh, you know, I mean, if we're going to compare backgrounds of uh, people we've talked to and things that we've linked to. Yeah, there's some there's some stuff that you have in your closet. I would not throw stones if I were you, but there is definitely a reason why you're you're hard blocked uh, by me and, you know, uh, anyway, enjoy that. But let's get to actual Eric Larson's a uh, little bit because you know, he um he gets some things wrong kind of right off the bat and and in almost the very first sentence he says I just watched a video which attempts to school Marvel and DC but actually offers no solutions, just observations. Uh first off, you know, was not trying to school Marvel or DC. The point of that video was simply to say, hey, look, you know, somebody who was an editor IDW, neither Marvel nor DC, that was what was in the video. Um, actually, you know, made this comment about, hey, you know, things are doing fine and it's all good. And, and the point that was made was that uh, Marvel and DC are somehow benefiting off of what's going on with manga. And then, you know, I pointed out kind of the hypocrisy of somebody who has, uh, you know, basically just a couple of years ago was doing an LOL, is Barnes and Noble even still in business? Now uh, wanting to say, don't believe what you're seeing in these photos. And this is one of the things, and, and in some of the comments, you see other people coming in there going, thank you, I'm tired of people saying the Western comics are, are bad, or people coming in saying, I went into my LCS and everything's fine there, there's barely any manga at all. And the point of that, it's, it's not a complicated point, so lots and lots of people can figure it out, is that the big box stores, the ones that are offering lots and lots of volume for these books, have figured a way to market, merchandise, and promote these titles and U.S. comic companies should probably do some observations and figure it out. But the main, the main thrust of that video was not to school Marvel or DC, but basically tell people, hey, how about you go in there and with your own two eyes, see what's going on. And by the way, this is why I irritate people like Andrew, like others. I irritate people because I'm not telling you what to think. I'm telling you, go use your own brain, which by the way, is not a comics gate talking point or a comics pro talking point or any of those. It's actually a point of saying, go use your own mind. Go, go do your own research. This is your job, not mine. I'm not here to think for you. And if uh, CG or anti-CG or any of these different groups want to jump on board and do all that stuff, more power to you. Go nuts. That's, that's not my deal. I'm giving you some basic data and you can do what you want with it. And unfortunately, anyone who says, hey, go think for yourself tends to really irritate, I'm going to use the word, the true fascists out there, which are what some of the people in the comics comments actually are quite bluntly if you're the one who says you know don't listen to something because they might sound like something else yeah you're the fascist just just you know by definition but at any rate uh, the other thing to uh, to Larcy said this offers no solutions just observations uh yeah that that's right the observation is hey this is what you can see you should go look for yourself if you'd like me to offer you a solution write me a check bluntly 
I'm not here to do your work for you. But let's get to the rest of his thread. It says, the reality is that Marvel and DC can't produce manga, and most attempts to emulate the format have been met with apathy from their readers. They tried a line of thick black and white books, and readers asked, where's the color? They tried weekly and bi-weekly titles with more content at a slightly higher price, and all those failed. Well, yeah, because it was at a slightly higher price to their own comics, and it was a much higher price to what manga is selling for. And this is one of those things of like, look, I, I get I totally get, and I, in this instance, I'll take Eric Larson or whoever's side. It is super annoying for people to use this data and then immediately go, LOL, Western comics are dying, manga superior. They don't really have a horse in this race either. They're just fun to watch something burn. But the reality is there, there are some distinct differences. And the price differential between the volume of, of material in a graphic novel and what manga is putting out is significant. It just is. Now, if you can figure out a way as a marketer, as a business owner, to get somebody to pay $24.95 for something that is, uh, from a consumer perspective, seen as about the same amount of volume as something that's priced for $6.99, more power to you. You're a genius if you can do that. But it is harder. I mean, if you got two things that the, your, your audience considers comparable, this is where a lot of comics have to get it. People in comics have to get out of their own way. Um, a lot of people view a manga Tonkamon graphic novel and a regular Western comic size graphic novel as roughly the same. Now, I know a lot of U.S. comic people are just shivering at hearing that. It sounds disgusting. But from a consumer standpoint, particularly somebody new to the space who doesn't have a lot of point of reference for comics, they feel the same. And if one's six bucks and one's 24 bucks, I, that's a big price hurdle to overcome. You've got to really bring some 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 value to try and convince somebody to do it. Again, this is this is just facts. It's not clowning on comics. It's not schooling Marvel or DC. It's just the way it is. Anyway, Larson continues. Says readers don't want to pay the higher price for books featuring second string characters. I, I, okay, fine. Oh, you know, one one argument I might put out is that when you reboot your characters over and over and over, they all start to feel like second string characters. But that's neither here nor there. It says, granted, they never went all in. That's true. But there seems to be precious little crossover. I disagree, again, as a retailer. If you like manga, it's unlikely you're going to sample Spider-Man. And readers of Spider-Man, for the most part, aren't reading manga. Hmm. Again, I think things like the Deadpool manga, things like other crossover books prove that to not be true. And it does fly in the face of what's going on with YA. Some of the YA books, be it Primer over at DC or some of the other successes DC has had with YA, suggest that there is a crossover. And I can tell you, just watching consumer behavior, you, it can happen. But you can't cross over to a product that feels massively different. You can't take a book that is superhero, action, kind of lightweight, $6 in a certain format, and say, well, over here, it's something that comes middle into the run, is decompressed storytelling, doesn't have a big payoff, isn't a complete story, and costs three times or four times as much. Those aren't the same product anymore. In that regard, I agree with, with Larson. They're different products. But you know, if you want to play in that space, you're going to need to figure out how to make them comparable. And my argument, I guess, is that Marvel and DC and Image need to figure out how to play in that space. I mean, I'm sorry, but Quite frankly, some of this stuff just sounds like whining. Like, man, it's hard. We tried and we couldn't figure it out. It's hard. Try harder. Bluntly, try harder. I'm, I'm sorry if that's tough love, hurts to, to hear, but, but try a little harder. You know, I, right now, comics is a very generational thing. And what's going on is that you're losing a generation, a generation that's not going to come back. So for all the people who are here worried about whether Perch sounds too much or not enough like Comicsgate, for fuck's sake, you're losing a generation of customers. I am not your concern. Anyway, Larson says, uh, uh, only Scott Pilgrim seems to work reasonably well, and that was for a mere six issues. Uh, okay, yeah, it worked pretty pretty damn reasonably well. I, I don't know, Brian O'Malley is not, uh, is not hurting for money. Um, I'm willing to bet if I looked at his portfolio right now, he'd be, he'd be doing okay, but be that as it may. Um, Larson says, same for YA fiction. Marvel and DC have dipped their toe in the water and the readers don't care and YA readers reject it. Not, not, not completely true. You know, DC has had some YA success. So has Marvel. Uh, I, I mean, 
I, you know, again, you can go to the Amazon bookseller numbers. There's some YA success out of DC to say readers don't care and YA readers reject it. That's just flatly not accurate based on the sales of those books. So there's also the issues that these books have a lot of pages and it's a huge financial commitment for a book with no guaranteed audience. Really? Really? Then the reality is that Marvel and DC readers aren't reading YA titles except that's not true. And those readers aren't reading Marvel and DC titles, which tend to cater to an older audience, except there's a clear path to go from one to the other. And we've seen that and we've seen it for years in the comic business. Look, Eric, I, you know, I all respect you. You've, you've clearly done a lot of work in comics. You know, the space you've worked in the space, but some of the things you're saying just fly in the face of the actual numbers that come out of the books. And certainly the experience that a lot of retailers, people you talk to going to comics, pro other things have seen for themselves. Like I've seen for myself. It's just, that's not true. So Larson says, so what's the solution? Well, there are a few books which do make it into bookstores. The walking dead and saga have done quite well. Mouse watchman, dark Knight returns have been steady sellers, but Marvel and DC have had a tough time time coming up with other evergreen titles. I think there's a reason for that. And it's that the books aren't really built to be evergreen titles right now. But the point made here, meaning my point was a bit silly. Yes. A manga sale is not a Marvel sale. Look, that's not my point. That was the, <laughs> that was the point I was responding to, but you could break that down further and say the sale of uh, jujitsu Kaisen isn't the sale of one piece. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, now you're splitting hairs. Or the sale of Smile doesn't help The Walking Dead. That's true. The sale of Smile doesn't help The Walking Dead. Uh, You know, (laughs) okay. The sale of Watchmen doesn't help Marvel, just as the sale of Marvels doesn't help DC. So, uh, you know, not really. Because strong graphic novels that are of the same genre do help things within their genre. Manga can help Marvel and DC if Marvel and DC has a comparable product. And that's what it's all about, a comparable product. Anyway, maybe we need to wrap this up. Uh, Larson says, the point is that for years, bookstores weren't viewed as a viable place to sell comic books of any kind. So the fact that manga and YA titles have managed to find a home there gives other companies hope, and Marvel and DC have, have managed to get a few things on shelves because manga paved the way. Yeah, except Marvel and DC had a lot more on the shelves, and their space on the shelves has shrank as manga has increased. It's not that manga has paved the way and Marvel and DC has managed to get things on shelves. It's, that's not true at all. That's not, it's exactly backwards. Uh, he says the reality is that there's no easy solution. Marvel and DC fans like the single issue format that the bookstores reject. Uh, I mean, except the graphic novel business has worked well there for Marvel and DC, you know, again, not as well as manga, but, but it's been a steady seller. At least again, that's what ICV two and Comicron and diamond and other numbers tell us. And frankly, you yourself told us this, I guess you, you, you know, you mentioned, some of these other books like Watchmen, you know, like, uh, you know, the dark Knight returns, uh, like the dark Phoenix saga back in the day, um, like civil war, all these books sold pretty well in a graphic novel format. He says, and switching to a manga like format would likely be a huge disaster. And I think there's no proof of that. I think right now the bookstores have, have picked a format and a size that they like that fits their shelves. And as big box stores, they do volume plays there. Says the entire setup is entirely different. Manga readers can expect a consistent look and the creative team on a given title. That is true. Artists employ multiple assistants to produce those titles. That is also true. And frankly, a bit of a uh, thing that the uh, the CG manga is kicking Western titles ass uh, never really highlight too much. You know, manga is usually from a team of people. Uh, it's a very different model of producing that book. To be fair, says uh, we don't have that in the U.S. You could. And it's not as though you can snap your fingers and have everyone fall in line. That is also true. It's a different culture with different rules. Um, what Japan? I mean, you're talking about how work gets produced. We're, we're you're, the, this entire point is bouncing around all over the place to avoid the obvious. But uh, anyway, we'll wrap up. So Spider-Man will continue to have arcs, which last six issues, and numerous artists, which contribute to most every title. There's no lesson they can learn here. There's no change they can make. will make their books viable in that market. See, I, I just flatly disagree, and I think it's sad, but bluntly. Look, I think that there's a lot of things to learn. If you go into the bookstore, you use your own powers of observation, you will see comics printed in a wide variety of formats, even including the same line where the trade dress is completely different. It jumps around. It's irritating and hard to see on the shelf, and it doesn't move as much. 
manga is largely conformed to a format that that fits packs more books on the shelves which is a you know very viable good business approach in a big box store which relies on volume and it, that that's that's what they managed to pull off now again the, the problem with this entire argument is too many people see it and they view it as like nelson laughing ha ha you know you suck Aha, uh-huh, Western comic sucks. And that's how they view this entire argument. As opposed to, look, there's a company, it's you know, a genre, that's figured out a way to get more books, more volume, more approach. Yes, the cultural differences are vastly different in producing manga than U.S. comics. And the U.S. comics are not going to snap to that culture and that, that way of doing things. But in terms of a product going out to the market, this is productization. This is, this is what any kind of leader inside a big company, including image would tell you, you look at what's moving, you look at volume sales in stores and you try and adapt to it. But bluntly, this is a kind of a recurring theme within comics. It's people who, you know, are are frankly just too arrogant to look past what they've been doing for years and years and years and consider there might be a better approach because I can take everything I've said here around manga and I could walk right over to the digital world and say Marvel and DC and Image are getting their ass handed to them by Tapas and Webtoon and all these other digital formats that have figured out that model. And if you're Marvel, DC, or Image, and Eric Larson, CFO of Image, you know, it pays to actually look what's successful in the fields that you're, you're competing in. And to say, you know, you can't on one hand say, you know, hey, we're all part of the same industry like the gentleman from IDW did and say, you know, their success is our success, which is wrong. And that wasn't my point. That was his point. And then simultaneously, you know, the next stage saying, you know, we're not the same product. There's no way to be the same. I mean, you can't push both arguments at the same time. It's one or the other. Pick a lane. But um, overall, I I mean, I, I look at this and I see all this and it's just... It, it to me, it all reads like somebody else needs to be in charge. Bluntly, I love comics. I clearly have. Anyone who uh, denies that is absolutely gaslighting you. You know, don't, nobody would do thousands of videos and talk about all this stuff at length for as long as I do. Just like the the dumbass who says, you know, oh, he's clearly CG. I'll oh, fuck off. You know, this is just a way to avoid actually dealing with the argument at hand. And the thing is. And it's what a lot of people, including, by the way, a lot of people from CG like to crap all over me for. I have hope that this stuff can be turned around because in many cases, the problems you're seeing are easy problems to solve. They are. The idea that, uh, you know, comic fans would hard reject something in a manga format. You mean a Tonkabon format? Really? I, I beg to differ. So it, it would cost too much to try. Really? Why is it then that you know, there's a lot of startups that are doing, uh, you know, licensing from overseas and putting stuff out and getting their books into uh, big box stores who have, you know, a, a market cap of less than 10 million? Because there are several out there that are doing that. So you're telling me Marvel, DC, or Image don't have the cash to try this format? Of course they do. That's ridiculous. Anyway, I don't know. I, I, hey, it's just my opinion, man. You're welcome to disagree. You're welcome to do whatever you want. You know, you can always tell kind of how people view by some of the comments. And and it really is this, uh, you know, it, it, isn't, it isn't easy, but I do think some of the solutions are easy. And by the way, you know, there's also some smart people. Some people in the comments came in and said, you know, hey, it's not about art style. Yeah, you're right. There's cultural work differences. You're right again. There's a lot of, of very smart points on this, but you know how titles are sold and put into the market is a big deal. And right now, somebody has figured out that market far, far better. Now, you can continue to say, well, there's nothing that could be learned there. I can't, I can't possibly figure it out. By all means, somebody will figure it out. And that person is going to own the market. Now, if you consider this schooling you, well, again, you're not listening. But for those of you who are listening right now, thank you for listening.
And for those of you who uh, come in and, and want to kind of deny everything by making up a bunch of bullshit, yeah, stop listening. You're, you're not needed. Thank <laughs> you.